morning, my keto family. Today is the 17th of July, uh, 2017. And uh, don't mind, my dog snotted on me a little bit this morning when I went to pick her up. Uh, this morning, went to the gym. I uh, had a little bit of a workout. Um, didn't have a good weekend. So, you know, we're moving. Um, we sold our house. And we're trying to get, uh, we're trying to move things out slowly because our house inspection is not till Wednesday. So we want to, we don't want to jinx anything and some, something can always go wrong and I may have to put the house back on the market and, you know, continue trying to sell it. So I don't want to like empty the house out right away, although that's my first instinct. Um... So what we're doing is we're leaving the interior intact uh, until after the house inspection and we started working on the garage and the shed. Um, and that's mostly my husband um, getting rid of his shit and there's a lot of it. And I'm not a hoarder. I'm the opposite of a hoarder. I am a minimalist and I don't like stuff. Um, I have a problem with a lot of stuff. He's a tool hoarder and has so many, I, I swear to God, we opened a drawer, he probably had, I'm going to guess 200 screwdrivers. Who needs that many screwdrivers? I mean, even if you lost 20 screwdrivers, you'd still have too many screwdrivers. And he didn't get rid of any of them. So we boxed all kinds of stuff. He did get rid of a lot of stuff, but we boxed a lot of that stuff up and took it over to storage yesterday. But it was highly stressful for him. And I know you guys know that we were doing a reboot and I was being very regimented and trying to um, get that last 10 pounds off of him. He had a an event on Saturday, Sunday morning, 2 a.m. Um, had a, a health thing and um, decided that he's done. He doesn't, he, he blames everything on keto. Uh, he's tired of talking about it. He doesn't want to do it anymore. He's had it. He doesn't care about the last 10 pounds. He just wants to exist. And I think he's just scared health wise what's going on with him. <clears throat> so I dropped it. I put away all my little spreadsheets. Um, I told him that it was fine. Um, I just want him to be less stressed. And I, I thought the 10 pounds, getting the 10 pounds off him would cause, would allow him to be less stressed. But I think the whole process of trying to get it off, uh, along with selling the house and a lot of other things, just compounded it. So we're going to let that go for now. And, you know, life is full of adaptations. So uh, he needs to just focus on work and the house right now. So that's what he's going to do. So um, I went to Kroger this morning because we were out of pretty much everything. I bought some eggs. And I'm not going to be um, doing kind of a reboot anymore either. I am policing myself, though, because when I did do a couple days of tracking, I noticed, because I don't track every day anymore, because I'm pretty much a goal, but I had noticed I had some carb creep. Uh, you know, I tend on the higher side of carbs because I'm at goal, and if I go too far below, boom, I'm below 120. And I don't really, I'm afraid, see, I've gained so much upper body muscle that I don't want to become, I don't want to look like a skeleton. Like, I like, I like having a little bit of meat on me. Um, or people start to say, are you sick? And I don't like that shit. That bothers me. So I went and picked up some food. And uh, like I said, I got uh, 18 eggs. I bought some heavy whipping cream. This Horizons brand is really good. It doesn't have that Kenrigian uh, in it or whatever it is, the, the one that causes brain damage. Uh, and I bought, I didn't buy Kerrygold. I bought just regular old um, salted butter. 
and I think it, I don't know who makes this, Kroger? Yeah, it's just Kroger butter, and it was half the price. Uh, I'm starting to think in terms of money, rather, I, I'm going to concede some things. Um, because we're going to be um, moving into an RV, I've started to consider what that means for food-wise. I'm not going to have the same kind of storage uh, or cooking as I used to. So I've got some baby romaine and I bought some baby arugula, um, his two favorites. I bought some Seattle's Best Coffee, it was on sale for $4.99. I usually just buy whatever's on sale, the cheapest one. And he loves these skinless, boneless sardines, greasy fish. Pass. Uh, what else do we get? I'm only doing this because somebody asked me, what do you usually buy when you go to the grocery store? Well, look at this. Uh, a bundle of asparagus because I love me some asparagus and avocados. Now, they're all soft. 88 cents a piece. I said, eh, what the hell, I'll get four. I've got two in the fridge. We eat them really fast, so. And also, you know, I, w I don't generally buy discounted vegetables, but he just marked these down when I was walking up to him. Two bucks, baby Bella's, get out, you know. I like me a mushroom. And they had cucumbers on sale, two for 99. So I got two of those. Sometimes I like the English ones because they don't have as many seeds. And then, of course, a staple is a yellow squash. So when it comes to canned stuff, I like... Now, believe it or not, we were running low on pickles, meaning I was out, which I'm never out of pickles. Um, I like the ones with the garlic in them. They are one carb uh, for an ounce. Usually an ounce is one, maybe two. Um, the Mount Olive brand. Olives, I like red and green. The green tend to be more expensive. I got a diced, a crushed, and a paste, tomato-wise because you just never know when you're going to want to make something and it's you're going to need one of those. So I just keep those in the pantry. And this is his favorite, uh, the Marie's Chunky Blue chunky blue Cheese. And then last but not least, um, I got meat. I wasn't going to wait around for Target meat. You know, I like to wait around for Target meat because it's cheaper, but um, I've been missing out on their coupons lately, so I needed this today. I gotta do some meal prep for him. Um, so I got some ground beef, just 93.7. I got some ground turkey, 85.15. And they have these on sale, um, just boneless chops, which I'll probably sear, and then I might just throw them in the crock to loosen them up to make them less dry for storage. I find that if I cook these on, in a frying pan on the stove, what happens is when I meal prep them, when you go to eat them again, the interior is just too tough. But if you put the, if you sear them like you would with a steak, like get your pan smoking hot, throw them down, get a little burn on them, and then throw them in the crock for two or three hours with a little bit of like vegetable broth or bone broth, they loosen right up. And then when you meal prep them, what happens is when you reheat them, they're not all dry in the middle. They stay pretty nice and, and tender and wet, which is what I have a problem eating pork in the first place. So the wetter it is, the better. So that was my haul for the morning. Um, I had a few people ask me to do another macros. I'm going to do another macros video, specifically salad. Um, a lot of people are missing veg and don't understand how I can make such a huge salad and have it not be like 50 carbs. 
So I'm going to do, I'll do a salad video. I'll do specific carbs, specific measuring and weighing. Um, those take me a little longer. So I'll do one of those maybe, maybe tomorrow. We'll see. Um, the man has to fly out tomorrow uh, for business and he'll be back. So I'll have the day. So I might get around to doing it tomorrow. So anyway, um, and I had noticed, I never used to eat yogurt, right? Because I always took uh, a colace or a magnesium for my gut health to keep things kind of rolling. I like fermented foods, that kind of thing. I started adding Greek yogurt in probably three or four months ago. Because um, in the beginning, I didn't. I was very regimented, very keto-centric, I guess you would call it. Um, you know, I stuck to a really small group of foods um, so that I could get to go. But then I thought, you know, I miss yogurt. I love yogurt. So I found a Greek yogurt that had nine carbs. Now, I had bought one when I went to Whole Foods, but it's too expensive. It was like eight bucks. So I bought this the other day. And this is um, nine carbs for a cup, right? Nine carbs, nine sugars. And I thought in my brain, you know, a quarter cup of that divided by four, divide nine by four, you know? Shoot, that's nothing, you know? For, um, for goodness that includes all of your live, you know, bacterias, uh, I'll take it. Um, cause active culture is so good for your belly, you know, and for gastric bypass, especially us, we have a problem keeping our biome kind of on a level, well, at least I do. So I, I like the fact that I could add that. Well, got to the point where I was doing a quarter cup here, quarter cup there. I was probably eating a cup or more a day. And so that's nine carbs if I just had a cup through the day. I was treating it more like an ice cream, you know, where you know it's in the fridge all the time and you're like, oh, I should have some more of that. It doesn't take up any room. It's good for me. Um, and I start to obsess about it. And so because I have that broken screwy brain that doesn't allow me to just eat and move on, you know, things will remind me of food. Like, I'll just be sitting there doing work or whatever, and then suddenly I'll just go, hmm, yogurt. <laughs> Wouldn't that taste good right now? And then I can't focus again. I'm all about, I'm just going to get a spoonful. But it's never just a spoonful. So with food policing for yourself, because I don't want anybody else policing me, I hate that shit. Don't police me, okay? I know what I'm doing. I get pissed off because I got to do it, but I'll do it to myself, all right? And I might slip back, you know, a couple days and have a little too much, and then I'll go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, Michelle, just check yourself before you wreck yourself. I mean, I could sit down with, with the big old, you know. I used to do this when I was fat. This was my favorite spoon. And I would just get a gallon of ice cream and sit in front of the TV. I could do that with this, for sure. Oh, yeah. Probably two of these. But I got to realize that that's a broken behavior. That's a dysfunctional behavior. We don't do that. That's not good for us. So we have to break that behavior. And whatever that takes to break that behavior, you do it. I get up, leave the house, go outside, put the little walkie bra on the dog and take her for a walk. Um, do some laundry, run up and down the stairs, go dig a hole, anything. Call somebody. It just, it doesn't matter what you do as long as you Get that distraction, and nine times out of ten, it'll pass. But you got to get that distraction before you walk to the fridge. 
So, yogurt, y'all. Watch it. All right, so this is it for me today. Michelle Chapman, Keto is Life. And if you love me or like me or even just think I'm a little funny, like and share, y'all, because I love y'all. Take care. Bye.